So I'm going to now show you one of my favourite recipes. And this one is a swordfish with a turnip puree and balsamic glazed carrots. This one is really simple to make, but it looks incredible. And if you can bust this out at a dinner party or when you're inviting family friends over for dinner, then this is going to be a smash hit. One of my absolute favorites, and I'm placing it on the menu here at Hacienda Ushimana. I really hope you enjoy this one, swordfish with turnip puree. Okay, so starting off with our balsamic carrots. <clears throat> you can use baby carrots and baby vegetables, then you can leave the skin on. Or if you're doing it like I am and using the larger carrots, um, just because I prefer them, we take the skin off. Reason being is that it's not so pleasant on a larger carrot. Great. At this point, top, tail, into the bin and straight down the center. Nice and even cut. And then I'm gonna go in half again, right? Now that I've got this nice and lengthways, what we do is we flip it over so you have the core facing up towards you. Take the side off, and then nice long diagonal strokes straight down. And goes over here, and then we get these nice lovely diamond pieces. This is what I want when I'm cooking, because this is the, the shape that I like the most when looking at my carrots on the, um, on the plate. So, once again, side off and straight down. Make sure the carrot pieces aren't too small, because if they're too small, then they're going to cook too quickly and they'll just be soft and break apart. We're going to cook these for about 40 minutes, so you don't want them to be too small. Now we've got all of our diamonds of carrots ready to go. Time to make the balsamic glaze. So, put these into a pot for the chickens. Balsamic glazes is nice and easy to make, right? What we want to do is we want to first of all melt our butter down in a pan. So, we're probably looking at about a tablespoon and a half there of butter. And this is organic honey farmed locally and is honestly the best honey I've had in my life. I've tried Australian, New Zealand and Chinese honey and Ecuadorian honey and this one is honestly incredible. It has the, the taste of all the flowers in it and it's, and it's really sweet like a candy. It's beautiful. So I use this one, locally farmed honey. Any honey will do. The main purpose is that we want to sweeten up the bitterness of the balsamic vinegar. Right? So honey into the pan with the butter. Straight onto a medium heat. And we want that butter to melt nicely with the honey. Now we don't want the pan to get too hot because we don't want the butter browning before the rest of the butter has melted. What we want to do is we want to melt that honey into the butter so it has this nice silk-like consistency. If it's too hot, turn your heat down. We're also not reducing the sauce. See that? Nice and silk-like, right? With the butter and the honey. Then, straight in with the balsamic vinegar. Probably using about 50, 60 mils there. And we want to bring this up to the boil. Now we turn our heat up, because you want to bring this to the boil. Beautiful. Now it's up to the boil, straight off the heat. Mix 
And there we go. I love the smell of balsamic vinegar, especially when we're making a sauce like this. And it just gets even better as we go. So now we've got our sauce, mixed with the honey and butter, straight over the top of the carrots, like so. Make sure it's evenly distributed. And mix. Now, because the balsamic vinegar hasn't reduced yet, right? As the carrots cook, we're gonna need to make sure that we stir them around so that all of the carrot gets coated in the balsamic vinegar as it reduces in the oven, All right? There we go. Into the oven, 180 degrees for 40 minutes, and we're looking perfect. Making sure that every 10 minutes, we stir it so that we're picking up that balsamic vinegar and covering all the different parts of the carrots. Now, moving on to the turnip puree. The reason why we do the carrots first is because the carrots take the longest to cook, and then we move on to the shorter periods of time. So first of all, for this dish, we have our carrots and then our turnip puree, then we'll prepare our salad. Once both the carrots and the turnip puree are finished, that's when we cook the fish. The fish cooks five to se takes five to seven minutes to cook, and we want to be serving that up nice and hot. Everything else we can keep warm. We can keep our turnip puree warm, we can keep our carrots warm, but we can't keep our fish warm because then it will overcook. The fish we do last. So, peeling our, our turnips. Beautiful. I keep the scraps for my chickens. Top off. And one nice whole turnip. Now, we're going to be cutting this into four or five centimetre cubes. Two across the side. And then straight down the side like this. the pot. Now you can do this in a sous vide and that probably works a little bit better but this is definitely the old-fashioned way that majority of households are going to be able to do. One garlic, back of the knife, palm hand, down, crush, peel. Crushing the garlic releases all that fragrance from the garlic, so it's already emitting that fragrance. That's just gonna go straight in whole. And a small portion of an onion. We're just gonna take off the cheek side here, take out the outer layer of the onion, like so. This goes in whole. So in here we've got to turn up our onion and our piece of garlic. Then we're going to cover the entire thing with milk. Beautiful, make sure everything's nicely covered in milk like that. Pinch of salt. And a bit of fresh thyme. Now for thyme, we take the piece. And we just run our fingers down like that. Time is a little bit tedious to take off all of the leaves. And I love the flavor. It really elevates this dish. Beautiful. One pinch. Straight in like so. And this goes over onto the stove on a medium heat. Straight onto the stove onto a medium heat and we let this sit until the turnips have become soft that a paring knife just goes straight into it. Now it's really important that you keep an eye on this because if you let it boil too much the milk is going to boil straight over. So you want to be sitting at that nice medium temperature where we're getting some bubbles coming through that we know that the milk's nice and hot but it's not too hot that it's going to boil over and spill out everywhere. So make sure you keep an eye on this as it cooks. Okie dokie, so <clears throat> have a look here. Our knife is going straight 
straight through our turnips with ease. So there we know our turnips are fully cooked. So we're going to give it maybe one more minute just to make sure. And then we're going to take that straight off. Having a look as well at our carrots. Beautiful, coming along nicely. So we give them a stir. And we're still waiting for that balsamic to really reduce around them. The carrots are probably about halfway done. Now. Make sure that we're constantly stirring every 10 minutes. And we're good to go. All right, so now that our turnips are nicely done cooking, we're going to put the excess liquid into another container. Just briefly, because we don't want to put it all in with the puree. Right, all the ingredients in. Pinch of salt. A nice knob of butter in and we pour the rest of our liquid up to halfway. If we need more we can always add more. We don't want to make it too thin. If we put all of the liquid in we're gonna have a very runny puree and we want our puree to have kind of like a bit of a solidity to it so that you can support the fish that we're gonna put straight on top. So on, on, everything good, great. Beautiful. And now we have this lovely puree. That kind of holds its shape, not too runny, right? Everything's nicely mixed. Make sure you taste for seasoning. A little bit more salt. New spoon, taste again. Brilliant. Delicious turnip puree, ready to go. Now we're gonna put this, we're gonna wash this pot quickly, and then we're gonna put the turnip puree into the pot cover the top with a layer of baking paper. This is going to ensure that the turnip puree doesn't develop a skin on top. And then that way we can keep it on top of our hot grill to make sure that the turnip puree stays warm while we wait for our other ingredients to finish cooking. And that's ready to go. So a balsamic vinaigrette I absolutely love because Rocket, uh, the lettuce that we're using for today's salad is quite bitter if you taste it by itself. But with something like a balsamic vinaigrette with the acid and the sweetness of this one, it really rounds out the flavor and makes it a very delicious dressing to add on top of the rocket, which makes it complimentary. So the way that we make this is really simple. We start off with about a teaspoon of mustard. I'm gonna make a really small one today. And once again, my natural honey. Can't get enough of this stuff, it's absolutely delicious. We add a nice teaspoon of that in as well. Pinch of salt and balsamic vinegar. For the amount we're making here, we're adding about two or three tablespoons. And then we whisk to combine. We want to make sure that the honey and the mustard have mixed into that balsamic vinegar that we put in there. Like so. And then we add in our olive oil. Just a touch of olive oil to increase the flavor. And then vegetable oil to emulsify. That's going to come together just like that. Beautiful. And now we have this 
nice balsamic vinegar taste. Make sure it's that well balanced. Beautiful. Here's one I made a week ago. If you mix it correctly, it should stay together, emulsified. And then all you need to do is just give it a quick shake. And it can, ready to go. This will keep for about two weeks. And it goes great on all sorts of salads. Absolutely brilliant. Okay, and here we have our finished glazed carrots. So you can see that that balsamic vinegar has reduced nicely over the top of the carrots, coating them beautifully, and the smell is phenomenal. This is exactly what they want. Perfect. And so here is the swordfish, right? So we've got this nice swordfish. We've got to make sure that it's dry on both sides. So we season both sides with salt. Right, I've already seasoned the first side. Season the second side, ready to go. Now what I recommend is that when you're keeping the fish, you pat it down with a paper towel to make sure that it's nice and dry. And we pat down both sides. The reason being is that we don't want anything leaking out of the fish while we're cooking, because that will make it not so pleasant. So now we're gonna go this into a smoking hot fry pan. I'm gonna fry both sides, and I'm gonna be ready with my crushed garlic and my thyme. This is gonna be so that I can baste the fish. Basting is when we put butter and aromatics, things that make um, our food smell better, into the pan and we coat the meat or the protein with the butter while we're cooking it. We do this as a finisher to finish off our meat. So we're gonna cook it first and then we're gonna baste it. Let's go. All right, so nice hot flame. Get the pan on, get it nice and hot before we put the fish into it. Vegetable oil. The reason why we use vegetable oil instead of olive oil is because vegetable oil has a much higher burn temperature. If you put olive oil into the pan, the oil's going to burn. So we always use vegetable oil when cooking in a fry pan at a hot temperature. It's also very important at this point to be using a non-stick pan. If you don't use a non-stick pan, then the fish is going to stick to the pan. You're going to try and flip it and it's going to be an absolute mess. So, nice hot pan. Do -do -do. Tap it down a little bit, oil in. You should see the oil moving around the pan with ease. If it's kind of holding, the pan's not hot. If it's moving around the pan really easy, if the pan is hot, back of your hand over the top of the pan, you can then also feel it. You want to make sure that you're really feeling that that pan's hot because you've got one chance. As soon as you put the fish in, the pan is going to cool down immediately. So you want to make sure that pan's hot before you put the fish in. Great, there we go. Take your fish close to the pan, picking it up gently because swordfish is, is, is quite frail. Bottom in and away from you. See how that when I shake the pan, the fish moves? This means that it hasn't stuck. Perfect. While our fish is cooking, we're going to prep our salad. So, cut some cherry tomatoes. Beautiful. Spanish onion. Nice and thin. No one likes big chunks of onion in their salad. And some rocket. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put the onions and the tomatoes into a bowl with our rocket. Just enough for two small salads. Dress that with the balsamic vinaigrette. That goes onto the plate. Finished. Coming over here. We know that our fish hasn't stuck. Great. Add to the centre of the fish. Push it up against the side with your finger. Tap over. Nice and easy. Turn your pan up against the side.
<laughs> Over. Brilliant. Easiest way to flip your fish. Now, just like I said before, we're going to baste the fish. So now we're going to take a nice large knob of butter, straight into the side of the pan. Beautiful, butter's going to melt straight away. Thyme, crushed garlic, into the butter. Large spoon, hold your pan down so that the butter comes into the garlic and the thyme. Mix that up, and we get our fragrance coming through. That just goes straight over the top of our fish. This is called basting. This is going to help finish cooking the top of the fish and as well as it's going to incorporate the aromatics out of the thyme and the butter and the garlic into the fish. Plating up is nice and simple, so we've got our salad in here, our balsamic vinegar that we made earlier. Give it a quick shake just to make sure that everything's nice together. Spoon straight in over the top. About two spoonfuls for this size salad. All right. Clean hands, quickly mix to make sure that all of the rocket leaves are covered. a nice handful and kind of just twist it in our hands, twist, twist, onto the plate. And that gives us some nice height. And then we're just going to place the tomatoes and a nice little pinch of the onions straight on top. Beautiful. Push that to one side. Now we want to create our base for our fish to sit on. So, spoon into your puree. Nice amount of puree onto the side here. A little bit more. Back of your spoon, push. Brilliant. There's the base for our fish to sit on. Grab our fish. Underneath the center with your spatula. Straight across and down. Beautiful. And last part, our carrots. We just want to grab a bunch of those carrots onto a spoon and put them nicely into the corner here. These are like the sweet with the tangy from the balsamic vinegar. Clean up your plate. And there we have it. Swordfish with a turnip puree, balsamic glazed carrots and a nice fresh garden salad.